All right, what's up, guys? So today we'll be going over Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm. Uh, now this algorithm uh, does what it sounds like. So basically, given a weighted graph, Dijkstra's algorithm will help find the shortest cost from a source node to every other node, right? And then if you just do a simple modification to the pro to the algorithm, you can also retrieve the actual path with each node from uh, with each node from the source node to the destination node that you want to. So this is the algorithm that we'll be going over today. Um, it is optimal if you have a little background knowledge in BFS um, because Dijkstra's algorithm is actually very similar to a BFS, BFS algorithm. And if you don't know what a BFS algorithm is yet, you can check out one of my videos uh, explaining what that is and how you can perform one of the breath, uh, breaths for a search. So I'll make sure to link that in the description below and be sure to check it out yourself. All right, so let's take a look at what we're going to be given. So we're going to have a weighted graph, and for simplicity reasons, we'll name the source node to be 1. So uh, give me a second. This one, this node right here, will always be the source node. All right, so I did an example of a graph that we'll be using. So we have eight nodes, and then we got around 10 edges here. I labeled the edge weights um, around each edge. So for example, 1 to 2 has an edge weight of 2. 2 to 6 has an edge weight of 2. Right. So basically our task is to find the distance from 1, the, the shortest distance from 1 to any node. So I have what it will look like here. So right here, if we were saying, if we were going from 1, Going from 1 to 1, it's going to be a distance of 0, right? Because one, 1 is 1. Going from 1 to 2 is going to be a distance of 2, right? Because 1 to 2, the shortest path here is, is this one, right here. All right, 1 to 3, it's going to be 1. Uh, 1 to 4, you might have to consider this one. So you can either take 2 plus 5 or 1 plus 7, and obviously it's going to be 2 plus 5, so it's going to go that way and go that way to 4. And then 1 to 5 is going to be 2 to 4, which will get you 8, and then the rest is what it is. So you might have noticed that I also have a parent thing here. So this is the modification that I was talking about. With this, you can find the actual path. For example, if you were saying I want to go from 1 to, I want to find the shortest path from 1 to 5, then with the parent thing, you can actually get the natural path, which will be 1, 2, 6, and 5. And uh, I'll walk you through on how to do that more specifically very soon. Okay, so now we're going to see our inputs. Um, I didn't make an graph class so instead we're going to be using it inputs so line one of the input will have the number of nodes uh, and then the other integer will be number of edges right those are all going to be within bounds of an integer so line two to one plus the number of edges we will be having three integers in each line the start node the destination node and the edge weight Right, and for this graph, we're talking about a bi-directional edge, which means if I say that there's an edge from one to three, you also have to assume that there's an edge from three to one. All right, that's what bi-directional means. So we're gonna assume that uh, the edges that I give you are bi-directional and there will be no uh, replicating edges. So let's take a look at our sample file here. Um, I think you can see this okay, but for example, in this example that I drew, we got eight nodes, and so this integer is eight, and then we have 10 edges, so this is 10. And then afterwards, the lines are like these, where the start start node is gonna be one, 
and the destination node is going to be 2 and the edge weight is going to be 2, right? So it's, for example, from 4 to 5, we have an edge weight of 9, right? Which is just this one right here. Okay, so now that we understand the input and we understand what Dijkstra's does, we can go take a look at the solution. Okay, so the reason we needed some background knowledge on BFS is because uh, this algorithm is actually very, very similar to it. So with a normal graph with no edge weights, right, we can just use the BFS to find the shortest path because it's a level search. So the idea of Dijkstra is the same. However, we do have edge weights this time, right? This is very important. Because if you don't have edge weights, there's no point of using Dijkstra. Uh, you should just use a BFS. But we do have edge weights. So to solve this, we still need to consider like our level aspect. But this time, instead of like just doing a first in, first out search, uh, a first in, first out data structure like a queue, we actually need to uh, think about this a little more. So instead we can just, um, so at each node we can have its distance from the source node, right? And in each iteration, we can just pull the uh, closest to the source node because we are finding the shortest path, right? So uh, the edge weights will definitely affect the levels Therefore, you need to pull the closest one to the source node each time uh, to uh, allow it to accomplish the same thing that BFS does. All right, so we can just use a priority queue to pull the smallest distance nodes from the source nodes first, and then run a BFS-like algorithm, which was result in a shortest path algorithm. All right, now we have a note here. I'll be representing the graph with adjacency lists. Um, usually you want to do that instead of adjacency matrix if, if they give you an input like this. If they give you a class, I would just go with the class. But if they give you inputs with uh, the edges and the number of nodes, I would use an adjacency list. Now, of course, you could use an adjacency matrix it's just that uh, it's a little more time consuming because some cells might not be edges and you wouldn't want to waste runtime on that. However, there are a few downsides with using adjacency lists. Uh, one, they're a little confusing to get at first, but they should be fine mostly. So with adjacency lists, we'll speed up our runtime. And then uh, I will actually walk through what an adjacency list is right now. So you might have heard that adjacency matrix is, you got, um, it's a matrix, it's a two-dimensional matrix. So you got um, the start node and the end node, right? But adjacency list is the same thing. So for example, we're just going to do one, two, three, and four, these, these four nodes. So in node one, we're going to have an array of lists. And the list is going to hold a class called two, right? Two is going to have two variables. Um, the node, node two, right? And then it's also going to have the edge weight. I'll just say W. So it's going to hold a an array of lists of twos. So imagine that these are the individual array cells, right? So for example, in one, we have a edge from one to two and an edge from one to three. So in here, we'll actually, so this is one, two, three, and four. In here, we'll have, in one, we'll add the two. So one is going to two with an edge weight of two, right? And then we'll also need to have one is going to three with an edge weight of one, okay? So that's one. So two is going to six and four. So two is going to six with an edge weight of two. Two is also going to four with an edge weight of five. So basically that's how you're gonna represent it. And this is good because if we want to say, get all the nodes that is going to be branching out from one, 
All that we have to do is go to index one and then loop through this whole list to find the nodes, right? So I'm going to erase some of these and then we can go through what an implementation might look like. All right, so obviously you can tell that we're going to use this graph and now I'm gonna head over to IntelliJ and we can start some code. All right, so I've actually started with a new class called Dijkstra Algo. Feel free to name it the same thing that I named it, but you don't have to. Okay, so the majority of our code is going to be in public static void main because that's what uh, it should be in. And then, so we gotta start with a few variables. So that's considered this. Um, in my example that I showed you, obviously we're going to be needing of a res, right? A res array where you'll store the distances. So where you'll store these values, right? Obviously we're also gonna need a parent array where we'll store these values. Okay, and then obviously we're going to also need a priority queue. So we can just straight up, um, straight up uh, instantiate those variables. So we're gonna have an int array parent. Now I, I am going to make this global because uh, we're going to pass in a, sorry, I am gonna make this global because in another function where we find out the actual path, we'll be using recursion and I just don't want it to get too messy with the parameters. So parent is going to be global. And then our uh, adjacency list, sorry, our, um, our list that holds the actual path is also going to be global because I don't want it to be too messy once again. It's, so it's just an int array and a array, array list, right? Nothing too fancy yet. And then to get the input, I'll be using scanner. Uh, basically what scanner does is it allows you to do count console input, and then you can input uh, anything you want basically. And then so we're going to have, remember our input, uh, type is number of nodes, number of edges, right? So we can just get that right here, which will be, we'll, we'll make it final because we don't want to accidentally change this, right? So final int and final int e equals new int and then in the next int. So what this is, is in is the scanner thing, and then the scanner has the, this next int method that returns the next int in your console, and then you can just pass that in. So n is going to be the number of edges, and then e is, sorry, n is going to be the number of nodes, and then e is going to be the number of edges. Okay, so now we can get our um, adjacency list, but before we do that, remember what I said about adjacency lists, it's gonna be an array of lists of uh, a class called two. All right, so we have to make the class first. So that's gonna be called two. So basically what we're gonna do in two is we're going to have an int node and an int weight, All right? This is the two node. Two node and then the edge weight of that two, right? So we're gonna have a constructor can take an int n into w. So node is equal to n, weight is equal to w. Okay. Now here we can instantiate our list and our array of list of two. Right? Call it adjacency list. And it's going to be equal to new list n, right? Because we only need number of n. And now we have to make a side note. This is going to be plus one because our nodes are going to be one indexed, right? Our nodes are going to be one indexed, which means uh, we won't have zero. So we're going to, and the, the problem is arrays are zero indexed. Therefore, if we just want to make it simple and use our node values, we have to add one to avoid and 
out of bounds exception. Okay, you might see that right here. It says unchecked assignment. Uh, Java actually doesn't let you put um, something like that here with a two, right? Because that it, I don't know why it doesn't let you do that, but it doesn't let you do it. So one simple way to solve this is we can just suppress the warning. And the warning is called unchecked with a lowercase u, if you were wondering what it was. OK, so now we can have our res array where, where we'll store the distances. So it's just in res equals new int to n. And then we also need a Boolean array. And what this Boolean array is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be visited, right? So if we look at this graph a little bit, we'll see that if we visit a node once, we should never have to visit it again. Because if we visit it again first, that's going to cause an infinite loop. Second, it won't result in any better paths. So if we say we visit a node one, then we won't ever visit it again. So that's one more thing to know, or you will get an infinite loop and it will not yield the correct results. The Boolean array visited is equal to new Boolean n again. All right, so now we get to the, the fun stuff. OK, so we have to cover one more thing before we do that. All right, so right here in our in our graph, you can see that we we will find the shortest pass, right? So in our result array, all of these values will get updated. For example, as 1 gets to 4, it might take the 1 plus 7 path to 4, or it might take the 2 plus 5 path to 4. So um, I don't know if you got this but when I said it or not, because it's going to process the. It's gonna be. It's gonna process one of these paths first, right? If it processes this path first, it'll yield a cost of eight. So then it processes this path, which will get you a cost of seven. Now, obviously, seven is the most optimal answer. So we want our array index to update with the value seven, right here, right? So in order to do that, we actually have to fill the array with um, max ints first, or uh, your m minimizing operation will not yield the correct values. So yeah, we want to fill it with max int, and then we can start reading in inputs. So for loop looping through e num number of edges, and then, so remember, we have three integers. The first integer is going to be int start node. So we're going to call that int.next int. Next one is going to be two node int.next int. And then next one is going to be weight, edge weight. Right? And then we just got to do one more thing before. Because we're creating an array of twos, even though the array is instantiated, each individual list in each array cell still has to be instantiated. So we'll just do that real quick with adjacent list at i equals new array list. All right. So now remember we have the start node, two node, and then the weight. What we're going to do is we're going to adjacency list, right? So adjacency list at s, which is the start node. We're going to add a new class, a new two will hold the two node and the edge weight, right? So this is going from S to this T node with the weight of W. And remember that they're um, bidirectional. So it's actually going also going from the two node to the S node with an edge weight of W. Now remember, we're only going to be visiting each node once. So we don't actually have to worry about um, it causing an infinite loop by doing it by directional edge. So now that we have our data data structure set up, we we can actually start with our Dijkstra's algorithm. 
So we're going to need a priority queue of um, another class. So now we've got to talk about this one. So right here, a priority queue is going to sort from the current node's distance from the source node. And to do that, it's going to have to sort it, right? So we actually need a new class, and I'll call it cur, class cur. So class cur is going to implement comparable. Now, it's going to be implementing comparable because you are using a priority queue, and priority queue needs something to compare with. And we actually need to compare with the distance from the start node, so we actually have to create a custom compare method to do that. So we'll do an int, int node for current, and then we've got an int dist, right? And then we have public cur, so we've got to do an n, and then int d, say node is equal to n, and then distance is equal to d. Now, if you're implementing a, an interface, you better implement all their methods, right? So we're just going to implement their methods. Now we're going to replace this part with our own. So it's just going to be d minus the other object um, o's d, right? Distance. Now a little inheritance here. Um, because it's giving you an object, you have to cast it to a cur in order to get our variables. Or because these variables are not an object, you cannot call o.dist, right? You can only call o.dist if dist is an instance variable in object, which it isn't. So all you, that you have to do is you have to cast it to a cur, which is this object, our object right here, and then get the dist from that. So what this does if, is if this dist, if the other dist is larger than this dist, it'll get negative one. If they're equal, it'll return zero. If they're not, then it'll, otherwise it'll return one. And the priority queue is going to take these negative zero or positive values to sort them in ascending order. OK, so we're going to have a priority queue of curves. The queue equals new priority queue. Now, priority queue is not a linked list, so be careful with that. The linked list will not give you the whatever value you called for here first every time you call it. So make sure that you're not setting anything sketchy for your queue. Make sure it's a priority queue. OK, so obviously we have to do some um, initializing work. So we ha obviously have to add our source node in. And it's just going to be a. Um, simple thing. And one thing I actually need to do is we also need to do a from. I'll get into that in a second, but basically that from is going to be help us find the actual path. So we have a from, right? So we're just going to do new cur. And then we have the, our node here and then our distance and then our from. So our node is going to be 1. Distance from 1 to 1 is 0, and then our from is also going to be 1. Okay, so um, all that we got to do now is do res at 1 is going to be 0. We do have to preset that. Um, I mean, you don't have, you don't have to, but you can. Um, okay, so while, this is our standard BFS thing, while queue is not empty. We'll do a level, so q dot size and then for that size, we'll have per equal b to q dot pull. This pulls the cur object, the smallest distance from the source node object out first. Remember, we're using a priority queue here. So with that, now we can continue. So we're going to do an int node is equal to cur dot node. So now we got to set our visit to true because we don't want to visit this again. And then we can check that if the res and node is uh, smaller, is larger, is larger than this current distance from the source node, then we can update 
this to be our current distance, right? Pretty self-explanatory line here. And then after that, we need to loop through all of its uh, neighboring nodes, which is the nodes that it's going to go to. So we're going to use our adjacency list here, which is going to be adjacency list and node, which will get us all the paths uh, from node to something else, the size. Okay, so int n is going to be the two of that. So we'll do adjacency list at node dot get j dot node. And weight is just the the edge weight of that of node two n weight. And then we gotta check one thing first. So if visited if n at visited is true then it's visited and we don't want it, so we'll just continue. If it's not, then we actually want to add it to the queue. So we'll do queue.add new curve, and then it's going to be this new node. And then our current distance, our current distance plus this edge weight, and then uh, from is going to be from our current node, so just node. Okay, so one thing you might notice is that what if this current distance plus w is bigger than the actual optimal path? The answer to this question is it doesn't matter because we're going to check that if the current distance right is going to be less than this one, then we'll do it. So if it's greater than uh, this value right now, it's fine because there's going to be some other distance that's going to be closer than that, and that will be our optimal one. But this is the reason this is necessary because some, um, even though it might not be the shortest path to this one node, it might be the shortest path to some other node later on. So you actually do need to store that. All right. So now that we've added it, that's basically it with the party queue section. So after this, you should actually have the result already. And if we just do a from a res dot length, remember we did we are one index, so we do start with one. So if the if the index at i of res is still equal to integer dot max in max value, that is impossible to reach. That's why it hasn't been modified. Otherwise, we can just um, print out at i. Now, I don't have any examples of a non-connected graph for this video, but just know that it will work. So we'll start simple. So let's run this one. And I'll copy my data set in. Hopefully we get the correct results. As you can see here, the distance from 1 to 1 is obviously 0. Distance from 1 to 2 is 2, right? You can see it here. 1 to 2 is 2. And then 1 to 3 is 1, 1 to 4 is 7, 1 to 5 is 8. So 1 to 5 is 2, 2, 4. And then 1 to 6 is 4, 1 to 7 is 7, and 1 to 8 is 9. And I'll show you this one. 1 to 8 is 1, 6, 2. So that's the optimal path. Okay. So let's get, let's keep going. Okay, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then it seems like we have an issue here because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so we're actually missing a node. The exact path that we're missing is this path from six to eight. So we're going to add that in the bottom so six eight two and that should update our new uh shortest path from one to eight to be six and then you can see that it did that so i just wanted to show you that adjusting or leaving out one edge actually matters to get to the destination node so instead of going one six two you can just go two 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 right to six to eight. So now you might be wondering, 
Um, what are we going to do with the parent? We've, we've had the parent, but we've never actually done anything to it. The answer is right here. If this current distance is going to be less, that means we also want to get the parent, right? So from here, the, the parent of 2 is going to be 1 because from 1 to 2, it's going to be uh, from 2, 1 is going to be closest to the source node. So let's get an actually better example. So for example, 8, right? 8's parent now is going to be 6. And it's going to be 6 because 6 is the previous node that is closest to 1. And then the parent of 6 is going to be 2 because 2 is the previous node that is closest to 1. And you can see that with that, we can actually build an actual path with recursion where we go from 8 and then we can go to 6 and then because 6 we can go to 2 and because of 2 we can go to 1. And at 1 that's the end so we, we actually got the path from 1 to 8 which is 1, 2, 6, and 8. So how, how we're going to accomplish this is right here. If that is less then we're also going to update parent, right? That's pretty self-explanatory from and that's why we added this from because we needed to know which node it was from so right here I'll just um, give you guys a look at what parent array looks like All right so we have no pointer let's see what that is uh, parent dot node okay let's see Let's see what, okay, we didn't instantiate parent, so we gotta do that right here. Parent is equal to new int, int. okay, there we go. Okay, so as you can see right here, it's gonna be, ignore this zero because that's just a zero index, but it's gonna be zero, one, one, two, six, two, three, six, right, okay. So uh, basically what we had here, but the only difference is that this is zero, but it doesn't really matter because this is just one to one and it can either be zero or it can either be one. So you're fine either, you're fine either way because you're, this value never really matters. Okay, so now you might be wondering how we're going to find an actual, the actual path. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use recursion, right? So it's just going to be a static void function and then called find path and then int destiny, int current node. And if the cur is equal to one, that means we've reached our source node. And then we can just do path add one and then return out of that function. Otherwise, we need to do path add. Uh, path dot add um, current, and then we got a find path because we got a recurse. The find path parent of the current one, right? So basically, what that's going to do is it's going to so if we're taking eight again, it's going to find the parent of eight, which is going to be six. It's going to add that. It's going to find the parent of six, which is going to be two, and then it's going to find the parent of two, which is going to be one, and then it's going to exit. So that's what it's going to do. And one thing we got to do here is because we're going in reverse order, you have to reverse the list. Um, of course, you can just insert at the position zero, but we can also just reverse it at the end. So right here, we finished our uh, find path, and then we can just test it here. So we'll find path from one to eight, and then we'll system dot out our path. Uh, our path list, which is right here. So we'll use the same set of that data. As you can see, it's going to be one, two, six, eight, right? As shown here, one, two, six, eight. So this is basically how you do a dijkstra algorithm. Um, it's very similar to BFS and definitely something that you should learn because it is very useful and. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you can give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you feel like this video earned it. And then if you want to see more videos, for example, BFS, 
or just any other algorithm videos in general, make sure to check out my channel page, which will be linked below, or you can just click the icon. And with that, that concludes our video. Thanks for watching.